All right, we are going to go through the Desmos activity um, for the first one. And we've just got a opening screen. Make a sketch of your energy over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, mine's been pretty straightforward, so I'm just going to draw a line. All right, today's date is today. Um, I'm calling this 3-1 um, Growth and Decay Integral Exponents. Alright, exponential growth. You start really small and it gets really big. So right here is your y-intercept. I'm just going to call that an A, whatever that number is. Um, and a lot of times, you're just going to have y equals a times b to the x. And that's growth because your b is going to be greater than 1. Decay, you start really high, and it gets really low. And if you notice, I'm not going to cross the x-x, as, or the x-axis. I've got an asymptote there. Um, I'm still going to have my intercept there of 0a, and it's still y equals ab to the x. But in this case, my b is between 0, greater than 0, and less than 1. All right. On this one, I'm probably just going to do the setup and let you do the calculator work. Let's talk about what all of these mean. This is your end number, ending point. Right here, A sub naught is your initial amount. R is your rate. It has to be in a decimal. I'm not writing that down, but you might want to make a note that it has to be a decimal. And your T is time. All right, so suppose that you have a radioactive isotope that the radioactive decay um, decreases at 15% per day. So your R is going to be 0. 0.15. And I did not put that in here, but if it's decay or getting smaller, we're going to use a minus sign instead of a plus. You've got 40 grams right now, so that's your initial amount. So your A sub naught is 40. Um, and you want to figure out how much is going to be left six days from now. So that's your time. Um, I'm just going to set this up as I said. So you're just going to have, you want to find your ending amount. And I could put it as a sub 6 because it's in function notation. So the amount six days from now is going to be your starting amount. And because it is decay, we're going to use a minus sign, so it'll be 1 minus 0.15, and your t is 6. Okay? You do part b the same way, um, but it's six days ago. You might want to think about what sign you want to use. All right, which one of these is always true? And then um, I gave a little bit of workspace if you kind of want to prove it to yourself. I will tell you right now, that one is, and here's the convince. So you could either type it out or write it out. What I did was I just took a number, like um, I'm going to let A equal 2, because it's a small number and easy to work with. So I plugged it in right there, there, and there, 2 to the third. 
plus 2 squared equals 2 to the fifth. That would be 8 plus 4. I put plus. What a doofus. I meant to put times. That's a times right there. 8 times 4 and 2 to the fifth is 32. 8 times 4 is 32. So, yep, I convinced myself. Um, now we want to find counter example because I said that that's not always true. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to let A equal 2. And if I put 2 to the third plus 2 squared equals 2 to the fifth, 2 to the third is 8 plus 4 does not equal 32. And again, if you want to, you can type that in. All right, what you are really doing here, adding, so let's actually, when multiplying exponents, you add the powers. Okay, because what I'm really doing is adding 3 plus 4. So my rule here is going to be x, and if I hit shift 6, that brings it up. And I found I had to put parentheses around this, a plus b. Hit submit. All right, which one of these is always true? I'll tell you what right now. It's going to be this. So we want to convince. So again, I'm going to let a equal 2. So 2 to the 6. Actually, I'm going to back up. I can do this one a little bit different. A to the 6. is 6 a's, a squared, 2 a's, I can cancel out and get a to the fourth. Uh, find a counter example. Yeah, this time let's let a equal 2. And disprove that. So a, 2 to the 6 is 64. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the third is 8. 64 divided by 4 is actually 16. It doesn't equal 8. So what you are doing here is subtract powers. So when dividing, subtract powers. So the rule here, keep the base the same. Shift 6, A minus B. Uh, which one of these is always true? It's going to be the top one, because that means I'm going to have 8 to the third two times. So a to the third means three a's. I'll do that. There's one of them. And I end up having six of them. So there I go. Um, the counter example, let a equal two. Plug it in there. Two to the third. Square it equals 2 to the ninth. I think that's 512. That'd be 8. Either way, it doesn't work out. So, power of a power. You will 
multiply and the general rule there would be x shift 6 a times b all right so here is a card sort um you're going to sort them into uh four groups like here i have x to the third x squared that's going to be x to the fifth so that's also x to the fifth and you're going to end up with four groups i'm not going to do that for you because um i think you guys can handle that all right here are the rules convince us that x to the 0 equals 1. Well, so if I had a number, let's say 2 to the 4, let's actually make that x. Sorry. Say x to the 4th over x to the 4th. We know that anything to the 0 power, or anything divided by itself is 1. And that is the same as x to the 4 minus 4, which would give us x to the 0. So x to the 0 means that you're taking something dividing it by itself. That's why it has to equal 1. Uh, convince us that um, 1 over x to the a equals x to the negative a. Well, we know that 1 is the same thing as x to the 0. We did that in our previous slide. So if I had 1 over x to the a, that's the same as x to the 0 over x to the a, which would be x to the 0 minus a, which would be x to the negative a. That's why that works. All right, simplify. You have to take that, we've got 3x cubed, and you're squaring it. You have to take the 2 and apply it to the 3. So 3 squared is going to give me 9. I've got a power of a power there, so that is going to be x to the 6. Here, I've got 8, x to the 8, over 4, x to the 4th. I'm going to go ahead and simplify my coefficients first. 8 over 4 is going to give me 2. And then I'm going to have to subtract my exponents. And that's going to give me x to the 4th. All right, on this one, I'm not going to write the whole problem down because it can get a little bit messy. I'm going to go ahead and apply that power of a power first. So 3 squared is 9. And I'll have x to the 6, y to the 4th, z to the 12th. And that's going to be all over x squared, y to the negative 4, z to the 6. If I had wanted to, I could have simplified inside first and then done the power of a power. Just personal preference. Now, I'm going to go ahead and simplify. Uh, there's no other coefficients, so 9 is going to stay on top. Uh, here, I'm going to subtract my exponent. I'm going to get x to the 4th. Be careful on this one because a lot of times people will put 0. You're going to have 4 minus negative 4, which is 8. And then 12 minus 6 is 6. All right, I think so. Tell me what you got, where your level of understanding is, and go from there. Enjoy.